Welcome back, Four Star Nation, and welcome to a special NCAA Tournament Final Four Breakdown Preview Show. With the man I enjoyed watching uh, as a very young child play for uh, a man by the name of Tick Price at the University of Memphis, uh, one Mr. Omar Sneed. Uh, Omar, Omar, thank you very much for joining the show today, man. Oh, no, man. Thanks for having me on. Well, Omar, when you look at this Final Four, uh, it's it, it, it's really come down to four really good basketball teams. Uh, as I said on our Saturday morning show just a few minutes ago, uh, I really believe that Houston has had the easiest path to get to the Final Four. But uh, let's talk a little bit about this Houston and Baylor basketball game just to start off. Uh, when you look at Houston, uh, you know they can they can rebound the basketball. But like I told John this morning, and I'm just curious if you agree with me or not. The reason they're re getting so many offensive rebounds is because they're not shooting very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that, man. But, you know, it kind of goes back to the theme of uh, playing an old Cincinnati team. You know, Cincinnati team, historically, when Coach Huggins had them, you know, they didn't shoot the ball particularly well. But what they did, they bullied everything and got second and third chances, at, uh, you know, at the uh, rebounds or whatever the case may be, just eating the uh, offensive glass up. So, uh, Houston kind of reminds me of uh, that type of team. Ken Martin days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hated those days. Tiger fans. Are, um, you hated it. I hated going against them. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll talk about all that here in just, just a little bit. Uh, but you look at this on the flip side of that game, Omar, when you look at this Baylor basketball team, uh, man, I mean, I watched them play a really good Arkansas team last week in the uh, in the in the Elite Eight. Uh, this basketball team is good. This basketball team is disciplined. Uh, they run their offense to just almost perfection. Uh, defensively, they're about the same way. Really, uh, is there a way that Houston can, can come away with the win against this, this Baylor team? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's it's always a way. I mean, at the end of the day, <clears throat> once you get past strategy, it has to come down to who wants it more, you know, towards the end. And so, what we're gonna see is just like a almost like a gladiator game, you know. I'm expecting to see bodies flying all over the place, you know. I'm I'm expecting to see, you know, it's probably some of the best athletes in the country, you know, out there on the floor, you know. And I think what it's gonna come down to, like you said as well, is gonna be who can hit shots tonight. You know, and uh, that's what I think is going to come down to. I mean, U of H is a, is a is a very tough defensive team as well. You know, we can't take nothing away away from them. And I'm I'm yeah. a little biased because you know Quentin Grimes, man. I'm a, a he played with my son in the in the backcourt uh in the eighth grade uh and and I just I just you know the comeback story you know because uh with the kid going to Kansas not having success yeah. and coming back to Houston man getting to the Final Four you know so I'm I'm kind of rooting I'm kind of rooting for the kid. You know, but it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a high profile game. Yeah, I'm already right my next point regarding him, to be honest with you, because like I talked about in our previous show, whenever they're down like two or three points, he always hits a shot to tie it up, for example, you know? Right. And I'm like, he's buckets for a reason to get them over the hump. And like you talked about, their defense is fun to watch. They, I mean, think about it, Memphis, you know, it just shows. How much Memphis could compete like a team against Houston this year in general? It came down to a buzzer beater shot, basically in the their senior night. Mm -hmm. But uh, that be that, like you said, it depends on what team is actually hitting shots and free throws. Of course, like we talked about in other shows, Wes, free throws will definitely be the key again for both teams. I know Houston didn't shoot the free throw line that well at all the last ball game. But uh, free throws could definitely come down to factor in that game as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, free throws, and you know, it's also you know, also who take care of the ball. You know, I mean, we both talking about we we're talking about two, you know, a high octane defense uh defense team. But it's gonna be about who can take care of the ball. You know, who doesn't turn the ball over the most. You know, and Quentin, like I said, I've watched him since he was a kid. I watched Mark Vital since he was a kid. Always been a supreme athlete. And um, I know that Quinn is is is, is um, built for the big moments. You know, I just feel like you know the pressures of trying to be a one and done. 
uh, if any kid is looking at that stuff, like it's okay to have patience and take time. Things will always circle itself back around for you if it's meant to be. And so that's what I, that's what, that's the storyline I'm watching with this kid, you know? So, you know, at the end of the game, yeah. you know, we down one. I mean, I wouldn't want the ball in nobody's hands, but him. So with that being said, who do you got in that game? Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's interesting. All right. So, uh, um, Alvin Brooks, the assistant coach, uh, I signed with him out of high school at U of H. He just got the head coaching job uh, at Lamar in my hometown. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm partial for uh, for U of H. I'm not going to lie. You know, I would like to see them do it. I would like to see it uh, done for the city. Um, Hakeem Olajuwon is one of my favorite players growing up, you know, so he's an alumni. So I, I would like to see it. I would like to see them get it done, honestly. So I'm pulling for U of H. Going with American. Uh, Omar to that game. Uh, yeah. Speaking of that game, uh, let's talk about, I just want to talk a little bit about the two coaches. Uh, it's two coaches, man, that I really enjoy. Uh, I know as a Memphis fan, it's not popular to say that Kelvin Sampson is a good coach or that, right. that Kelvin Sampson is anything <laughs> positive because he coaches at Houston. So, but, uh, I mean, I, I a realist, I call a spade a spade and he's a damn good basketball coach. When you look at the other sideline, You've got Scott Drew, man, and that guy can really get after it. Uh, talk a little, little bit about uh, who do you think has the coaching advantage tonight? Oh man, that's uh, that's tough. I mean, I'm going with I'm going with Ke Kevin Samson. Um, you know, Drew Scott Drew is a very very good coach. I mean, one of the best. But uh, Coach Samson, man, you know, it's, I just I just feel like it's his time. You know, I just feel like it's Coach Samson's time, man. Um, once again, as, you know, I took a visit to Oklahoma, and, and Coach Samson was there. He knows how to recruit. He knows how to get the best out of his players. And the main reason why I'm pulling for Coach Samson yeah. outside of his coaching stuff is the fact that when you look at his bench, man, he he uh, reaches back to his former players and he brings them on. He that 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 stuff that colleges talk about family. He he creates that atmosphere. So yeah. I'm rooting for him in so many different levels. Yeah. So you know, once again, I'm going with Coach Samson. Great point. Great point. Uh, when you look at the other game, Omar, uh, <laughs> you've got Gonzaga chasing history. Uh, they're 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 trying to reach that undefeated. It hasn't been done since uh, back in the '70s uh, with Woodson, uh, and they're going against a team, man, that's been a lot of fun to watch in this NCAA tournament from the first. First four, final four, the UCLA Bruins and Mick Cronin, the fighting Mick Cronins, are in the final four going against Gonzaga. Uh, can they knock off the beef in Mark Few and the Gonzaga Bulldogs? Uh, man, honestly, you know, I, I don't think so, man. I mean, Gonzaga, they, they had their stuff together. You know, you talk about a well oiled machine. Yeah. Um, they have it together, man, you know, and they have a lot of – you know, pressure and, you know, pressure is a privilege, man. Everybody can't um, respond under pressure. Everybody doesn't deserve pressure, you know, but this Gonzaga team definitely does, man. Uh, you know, my, my high school team, we were chasing an undefeated season. We lost by one in the state championship. I only lost of the season. So mm. I, I definitely understand, you know, what it's like to try to play, to try to, to finish it out, um, being undefeated. You know, you're going to walk in with a different type of swagger walk in, like I say, with my shoulders, but Gonzaga is a well-armed well -armed machine. I mean, you talk about UCLA in that done. matchup. As a, you talk about UCLA in that matchup with defense. When you hold 49 points to your last opponent, you're doing something right. But, uh, you know, I think it also depends on how the young players for UCLA come up in this game as well, because the young players have led them throughout, like you said, West, the first four to the final four right now. But again, each, but again, Mick Cronin's got them this far and he got them pretty well. But the young players could be the factor in this game between the young players and the older players for Gonzaga as well. Right. So, I mean, you know, when anytime you have anything like that, you know, you have experience. You know, versus uh youth, you know, and, and, and the thing about, you know, um 
young players, a lot of times, man, they don't understand the magnitude of the game, so they just playing. You know, they just hooping. You know, it. hey, we, we just going out here to play. We don't know what's really on the line. You know, we've been doing, you know, playing like this. This is what's got us here. We're not changing. Older players, a lot of times, man, I know at least when I was a senior, you know, you go into certain games, man, and you got a lot of things on your mind. You know, you're wondering who's in the stands, who's watching. This the last game. This might be the last game I ever play in my life. You know, go hard. You know, I mean, you can't leave nothing. Um, You know, you can't leave no uh, corners unturned. I mean, so it's just a lot of things that goes into a player's psyche before he uh, uh, goes into this game, you know. But, you know, technically a vet should always prevail because you've been there before, you know. But, you know, it's always that element right. of surprise. And Gonzaga shaved right, the ball Omar, so, so well. when it comes to that, what well, I was ball, about yeah. to say, when it, yeah. when it, when it, when it comes, when it comes to Gonzaga, man, they're shooting the ball almost perfect. I, I mean, I, I just don't know. Uh, I I haven't seen them have an off night this whole season, and that's just really incredible to me at the consistency that they shoot the ball, but defensively. If they turn you over and get to running, they'll run you clean out of the gym. Literally, will run you out of the gym. Uh, I mean, this Mark Few, I love him. Uh, the guy's just built a absolute monster at Gonzaga. I, I I agree with somebody on Facebook right now. It said UCLA can't run with Gonzaga. You're exactly right. Nobody can freaking run run with Gonzaga. They got gazelles at every position, center included. Um. Mm. So I, I'm i just taking it that you're going to say Gonzaga is going to beat UCLA? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. Uh, all right, so when it comes to – when it comes to the national championship Monday night, you got Gonzaga, you got Baylor. Give me Tiger legend Omar Sneed preview of that game. He had Gonzaga versus Houston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. That's why he looked at me crazy. I was. You're right. My bad. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, like I said, man. Hey, now we only talked about that one side. When it all <laughs> comes down, to rooting for U of H, right? But if you know Gonzaga, to me, was gonna, go, you know, I feel like Gonzaga's gonna win the whole thing. You know, I, I mean, I just have to go out and say it. Like now, the only thing that concerns me is what happens when. We do run into that night. We don't shoot the ball particularly well. Have they ran into a defense the caliber of U of H or Baylor? You know, that's uh, that's just right. some questions to ask, you know what I mean? Um, but as of right now, man, yeah, I have to go with Gonzaga to pull out the whole thing. Like, they average 18 assists Most definitely. per game. Yeah. And I, like I said, I don't want to, like, I don't want to jinx nobody, but you know, I just went through this with my high school team. You know, we averaged 93 points a game, 20 assists a game. Um, We blew everybody out the water. We had, like, 12 to 1,300-point games, got to the last game of the season, and let a team basically play half-court basketball, and we lose by one. We had uh six assists uh for the game. We normally average 20. So, when you get to that stage, man, a lot of people don't understand those those light bulbs on that big stage. They shine a little brighter than normal light bulbs, and so my biggest thing is you just got to make sure that your guys are locked all the way in. I'm talking about from your coaches down to your trainers. Everybody is locked in and ready for you know ready for what's about to happen out there on the floor. And you would just hope that you can follow ninety percent of your game plan. You know, and, and and that your players will get you through the rest of it. So it's just going to be very, very interesting to see. But I still have Gonzaga. You know, you made up a good point regarding that loss, uh, Omar. I want to ask you. Uh, I want to ask you a question regarding that because I'm not saying tanking, not taking, but uh, maybe losing a game or something like that when you're not supposed to. I know it's the Final Four now. You know. Is it best to go ahead and lose the game, uh, like in regular season, for example? You know, when you have that undefeated streak going on, so the guys could basically get maybe see what a losing game looks like, in a way. Does that makes sense. 
Yeah, well, and I'm be and you know, and that's I I'm man and I'm glad y'all uh chose me to talk, man. I love talking about stuff like this. Cause once we lost that game, you know, you get back to school and everybody asks you the same question. And so my response to that is how do you teach kids and people how to lose? Like how do I so how do I lose a game? You know what I mean? So like you you know, you go through your off season, you go through your preparation, everything to win. So how do you lose a game? You know, because that one loss could mess everything up. Because you got to understand your true – now, the only thing about it is your true character, your team's true character, parents, players, everybody, can only be revealed during a loss. That's the only thing that I feel like losing that I gained from that. Now, because I can see who's who. It's hard to see who's who as long as you're winning because everybody's happy. And when people are happy when you're winning, when that people are not happy when you're winning, then you got a whole nother problem on your hand. You know, so man, yeah. Just the game, you know, just losing the game for the sake of a loss, I don't know if that really teaches anything. Now, if I lose a game playing my way, playing our style, then I can go back and have teaching points. But just to lose for the sake of the feeling of losing, no, I don't I don't really agree with that. No, I just seen I seen a lot of coaches not here locally, but uh, all over the country. You know, like for example, they have like a twenty you know regular season, or not twenty you know regular season, but they go down to their last game and just play different people, and then they just lose that game, so the guys could get used to the yeah. losing. Just to say they lost the game in the regular season, so the guys could get used to the like. I know they want to go on a big winning streak in the postseason and a race to state championship game or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think a player would feel more down on himself losing the state championship game while on the only loss of the year rather than losing a game in the regular season so he can get used to that losing. I mean, so the, what, the players can adjust to a losing game in general. That's just me. Well, no, nah, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't disagree with that part, but what? But I think what I'm saying is um, if you play a competitive schedule, like we play a competitive schedule, okay, our district isn't, isn't as, 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 but with COVID, you know, it's hard to, you know, you have, they took away tournaments, right? But we still play the competitive schedule. So if I play a competitive schedule and I'm beating teams that's 5A, 6A, because we're 4A, and we're still beating those teams, then maybe we're just that good, you know? And like I say, it comes down to yeah. the other team, coach has 19 state titles. They put two Division One players on the floor. So you just ran into a good team. You lost by one. You know, so, you know, I just even the whatever my philosophy is, I'm going to run with that, and I'm going to let the chips fall where they may, you know, and 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 trying to get a loss or whatever. I mean, I'm just not superstitious, so I don't mm-hmm. think losing going to help me none. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, Omar, of course, you played for the University of Memphis uh, under Tick Price. Uh, back in the day, uh, you we were honestly one of man one of my favorites to grow up watching. Uh, just your physical style of play, uh, you were all you always seemed to be very upbeat, very 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 happy, uh, and enjoyed playing the game of basketball. Uh, this is a two part question. Uh, first question, first part is, what was it like playing for a guy like Tick Price? Um, just the name always kind of made me laugh, honestly, but. Uh, I mean, what was it like to play for him? And then second part is, uh, after your life as a Memphis Tiger and a college athlete, what have you been up to uh, uh, since then? Okay. Uh, um, playing for Coach Price. We uh, asked the tough, we asked the really, really hard questions here on Four Star Sports Show. Hey, man, hey, keeping it real, man, is, uh, is always been my motto, man, you know, uh, Playing for Coach Price, man, it had, his, it had his ups and it had his downs, you know. Um, a lot of the stuff, I would say, had to do with me looking back at it, you know, because, uh, you know, I was very, very hard-headed and stuck in my ways. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, I feel like Coach Price, I feel like his uh, struggles was just, you know, being a people's person, somebody that I could go, you know, somebody that yeah. you can really just get down and get a, you know, straight-up conversation. I think that was the difference between him and Coach Finch because I signed with Coach Finch. And when I signed with Coach Finch, it was – Coach right. Finch was more – I mean, it was like a daddy. You know what I'm saying? It was just like a dad. You got the dad feel when, you know, when I was dealing with Coach Finch. 
you know, now, um, now was now Coach Price would be there for his players. Like, don't get, don't, don't, don't get it twisted, you know. But like I said, with Coach Finch, man, I just feel like a father. You know, when you playing for a, a, a father, as somebody you don't want to let down. And I had put it in myself a long time ago, you know, that I'm gonna always play for what's on front of the jersey, but I represent what's on the back of the jersey. So like I represent my family name. You know, and my family, you know, they're blue-collar workers. You know, my mom, which is my hero, she worked 35 years in a refinery. You know, my dad and my uncles, you know, so they 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 packed the lunch kit every day and went to work, and that just symbolized my game. Nothing flashy, you know, no gimmicks. You get out here and play and have fun because you never know right. when it's going to be bad. So that was just my motto going into it, regardless of whatever relationship I had with a coach or didn't have with a coach, you know. I signed with Coach Finch for a reason. That's who I wanted to play for. I didn't get a chance to play for it. I owe, I owe, <laughs> for it. I owe Coach Price a lot. Um, he coached in my hometown. He recently just got released from Lamar. And, um, you know, a lot of people was, you know, wondering how come, you know, he didn't bring me in to, you know, be on the coaching staff or whatever. And he might have had his reasons. I'm not sure. But what I will say is this, you know, once I finished playing, man, I didn't have my degree. Didn't have no real direction of what I needed to do after the ball stopped bouncing, because I let basketball determine who I was instead of making it about making basketball just being what I did. And um, you know, right. so went to Coach Price, man. He he got some things done for me at Lamar. Took care of some stuff, man. And next thing you know, I was able to enroll back in classes at uh at Memphis, and I came and I got my degree. And I didn't. I've never looked back since then. Everything has been a go since then. So I'm always gonna um, be grateful to him and Miss Jamie for that part. Um, you know, for that because that helped me with my life. You know, so I'm always be right. grateful for that. Okay. And uh, the the second part was oh, what was what am I doing now? That was the second part was right. Okay. Well, so, let me let well, me where have you let been me, up to? Uh, well, my but you mentioned something, so let me ask this question: What was it like to be recruited by? I mean, a absolute Memphis legend in the late great Larry Finch. Oh man, everything, everything! I never forget, man, being in San Jack with one of my other favorite coaches, Coach Scott Janander. Um. And I ain't going to even lie, man, I was there for two years. I might have skipped class two times. I wasn't perfect, but I might have skipped two times. And he caught me skipping that time. And ESPN had just come on. And um, it was the headlines was Coach Finch was being released, man, and it crushed me. Because, you know, as a kid, you know, you fall short. I signed a U of H. That didn't work out. Go to junior college. You finally get it right, you know. And then you sign and yeah. with a legend. Like you said, he was a legend, man. When the man came to watch me, we had gotten in trouble that day. We didn't even go into the gym. So coach put us on the track and put us outside on the uh, bleachers. Because i never forget, it was so hot outside, and Steve Francis was my our, our point guard, and he ran in his boxers because it was so hot. You know, he's from D.C. He wasn't used to the Texas weather. And um, right. And all Coach Finch seen was us running. And then the next day, I know – you know, they set up the flight arrangements, and I'm out there. And, and let me tell you how he did it. When he got me, he didn't take me to all, like, the fancy places, you know, all the well-to-do places, man. He kind of he took me around. He showed me the city. He showed me, like, you know, how mm -hmm. where grew up, where, you know, so all you got was, like, real. You know, man, this man is this man is sharing his store. You know what I'm saying? He's giving me his heart right now. And so you want to run through a wall for yeah. a guy like that. And with me being from Texas, because that's kind of uh, that was kind of almost unheard of being from, you know, out of the city, because you can just recruit within Memphis alone and be fine. Um, and bringing yeah. myself in, that, man, that just made me feel, you know, it's made me feel wanted. So um, it was big. And uh, even he would come to some of my games. And I remember him coming to uh, one game and man, him, my mom, my, my dad, my uncle, man. I mean, they sit up and talk for like five, six hours, like just, like just like a family reunion, you know. So, you know, I hate that I never got a chance to, to to honor him by playing for him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow, man, that's that's awesome. That's that is an awesome story. I just you know Larry Finch. Uh, I mean, I obviously I grew up watching him uh, as, at a very early age. Uh, but just hearing the stories from my parents and my grandparents about not only how great of a basketball coach he was, uh, but how about how great of a player he was, uh, not only in high school at Memphis, but also at college at Memphis State. Um, so what have you been up to after your Memphis days, Omar? Well, man, you know, I, I went to uh, – man, I started out <clears throat> um, Rocket Summer League. Um, you know, and the first year didn't go so well. Second year went extremely well. Um, but I had a, a contract already signed over in Belgium, so I started playing overseas. And man, I did a 14, 15, uh, 14 and a half years overseas in Europe. You know, um, wow. I had a great career, man. Uh, met a lot of good people, you know, I learned a lot of different things, man. I mean, honestly, being in Europe really changed my life, gave me a, a a better perspective on how life should be, you know, going to different cultures, man, you know, picking up um different habits, playing basketball, man. My first year in Israel, um, I run across Chris Gardner, which was my host at Memphis. You know, man, uh yeah. over the over the times I ran across Dorsey, I ran across Sean Taggart, um, oh, oh my brother Chris Massey. Um, you know, man, yeah. so Oh, uh, Kelly, man, I played against Kelly and I ran. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, so, you know, I got a chance to see, you know, a couple of members alumni. Some, you know, know me, some don't because I'm old now, you know. And um, so I started AAU. I have my own <laughs> AAU, you know. And uh, and um, I'm an assistant coach, um, assistant coach at Hard Jefferson High School. Um, I have a girl that I've been training since the fourth grade. She's a Duke commit. Um, her junior year, she's one of the tops in the country. My daughter is a uh, wow. it, it, my daughter is top thirty in the country. Um, she uh, she's just a freshman. Um, had a, a phenomenal year. Um, you know. Um, so that's where I'm at, man. My biggest thing is just to get back and help kids. I want to coach at the highest level. You know, I want to be a head coach. I want to crack into the collegiate game. You know, I mean, I reached out to uh, yeah. Memphis. They were going through their hiring process for on the girl side, just trying to get uh, just trying to get my foot in the door. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep working, man, and yeah. just keep putting, you know, until finally something happens. And it's all about the kids in the long run, Omar. Like you just brought up, man. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, here's the deal, man. With all the stuff going on in the world, you know, I was telling people this, man. I um. You know, Trump, Biden, man, who else? Whoever you voted for, man, listen, you still got to live your life and you still got to do what's best for your family, man. I mean, you know, one person is not going to determine or change, you know, how I think and how I feel. You know, true character will always reveal itself. And since I teach kids and, you know, I'm a, you know, PE teacher and I deal with a lot of kids, my biggest thing is to always teach unity, brotherhood and sisterhood, you know, because I hate to see us fighting against each other for nothing. You know what I mean? I hate to see kids fighting the street yeah. because of the color of a flag. Mm -hmm. I hate to see people fighting because of political views. You know what I mean? And 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 the and the biggest problem is, and I tell the kids all the time, you know, I'm 44 and it's people older than me, like my mom and grandparents, they're on their way out. And I'm I'm shortly thereafter. So we don't have long to live in this stuff. You guys and my grandkids, like they're going to have to live in this world. So if you won't change, it's up to them to change it, you know. And so we have to breathe leadership into these kids and let them know that, hey, you have the ability to change it. And it won't be easy, but it'll be worth it, you know. So, you know, that's just kind of my, uh, I guess that's my Martin Luther King speech. <laughs> where's that? Where's that? <laughs> that was a good one, but yeah. So where's that uh, high school located, Omar, that you're coaching at? Pardon, Jeff. Sour Lake, Texas. Sour Lake, Texas, man. Straight out the country. How far from Dallas? Oh, <laughs> man, we're about five. We're about five hours from Dallas. We played the state championship in San Antonio. But, yeah, okay. we're, we're, about five, we're about five hours outside of Dallas, man. It's a small, it's a small school. Oh, yeah. But let me tell you about it. It's an old school school where you have people that – graduated from their parents grandparents graduated from there they come back and they teach and they live within the community the community support is 
is ridiculous. And, you know, it's, it's something that a lot of the it's, – it's what's missing. You know, like they play for pride. You know, I mean, you got kids that get up in the yeah. morning and milk the cows before they come to school. It's, it's that type of stuff. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Kind of like Ross Wilkin Academy, John. I, I, I totally yeah. understand it. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> you know, Omar, uh, is that is that down around like the uh, New Braunfels area? Uh, is that is that? I mean, am I in the am I in the close proximity to where it's, you are? It's in the Golden Triangle, down by Beaumont, Port Arthur. See, I, I'm from Beaumont. Okay, okay, right. I got you. I'm, yeah, okay. I'm from Beaumont. Got you. Kirk, Beaumont, got you. from Port Arthur. Yeah. You know, talk, Omar, you okay, talk about yeah, your yeah, Memphis. Okay. Omar, you talk about your Memphis playing days. I want to ask you a question for you, real quick. You, like you said, you hated playing Cincinnati. Um, name some teams that you know that you pretty much enjoyed playing against, like in a hostile environment, like at Cincinnati with Bob Huggins. Like you talked about, like we talked about Ken Martin, uh, Mr. Logan, the point guard that they had. And I'll still never forget, I was like, you know, I was going to hope to go to Conference USA tournament, you know, when it was held here. I was hoping to get out of school, get out of school that Friday that King Martin towards ACL. Yeah. But just talk about, you know, uh, the conference matchups that you enjoy playing the most in. Well, uh, you know, one of the ones that stick out of my mind most would be UNC Charlotte because, you know, DeMarco Johnson and that crew was – uh. You know, that was a good, you know, good crew, man. Yeah. They're, they're good players. I think he was player of the year. So when they came to the pyramid, man, that was a real, you know, I was hyped up for that one. You know, and uh, and I and I honestly feel like if I look at the stats, I won the matchup, you know. But we won on the buzzer <laughs> beat by Kildrick, by Kildrick Bradford, you know. Um, so that was a great one, man. And, um, you know, of course, Cincinnati always was uh, – a tough one, you know. I don't think we ever beat them. Um, uh, Southern Miss, Southern Miss. Let me say that too. My brother Kelly McCarty. We was overseas together in uh, Russia, and Southern Miss was always just a, a tough, hard nosed team. You know, just gonna just gonna fight. You know, what I mean, a, a screen was a screen. You know, um, Larry Hughes playing against those guys in Cincinnati, though. The whole makeup of the Cincinnati arena, the the Bud Light Penguins, and the fans going crazy, you know. I'd be glad when basketball gets back to that point. And um, mm -hmm. it was another. Oh, Louisville. I'm sorry, I can't. I yeah. Forget about Danny Crum and those guys. You know, I never forget. Um, <laughs> that yeah. year we played Louisville at the at, at the pyramid. Um, which I don't know how y'all let them turn it into a, a fishing place, a bass shop, but um. <laughs> Omar, that audio file, that that little audio bite right there will be saved. And when I make a video for this show, it's going to be on there. I'm just going to go ahead and let you know that. That is awesome. Hey, hey you know, so I, I just, you know, but I, anyway, I, I walk. Hey, I like, hey, Omar, I like my fishing, okay? Hey, I like it too, but God, you know, I go to show my kids, <laughs> and we walk up and it's a, it's a bad shop or whatever it's called. I was like, oh man, but you know, it's, it's all good. But, you know, I walked in this gym for for the shoot around, and man, when you see the blue one side, I mean, one half of the gym is blue, the other half is red. And when you when you walk out, man, it's it's just people all over the place. And oh man, that was probably one of the best games ever, man. That uh the Louisville game and then the the Paul game, you know, when uh we lost and that game probably yeah. hurt our chance that we had to go in the tournament. But I remember that game, Detrick and myself, man, we played out of mind that game and fell up short, fell short. I know y'all didn't get to play against yeah, Dwayne Wade, definitely. and or, I didn't know y'all didn't get to play against Dwayne Wade. But wasn't Marquette in the league in the Bradley Center back yeah. in the day? Yeah, and no, no, let me and yeah, uh, that's how old I'm getting. I forgot Marquette. Yeah, Marquette was very. There was that with uh Mike. Was it Mike Dean? Is, is that was <laughs> I forgot who their head coach was. I was like thirteen and fourteen, but yeah, yeah, it was him because he ended up coaching at Lamar. He ended up coaching in my hometown too. I don't know why. Coaches from the conference come to Lamar, but yeah, 
So he ended up coaching in Lamar. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so two oh, lane, not <laughs> two lane, and U of H was always a good battle, too. You know, just U of H was just personal yeah. for me because I, I signed in and get a chance to play. And, you know, I just had always had my personal vendetta with them. But they, but I mean, excuse me, they always end up having good matchups, man. We always had good battles with those guys as well. You know, back then the conference was pretty tough from, from, from top to bottom. You know, it wasn't really too many cupcake games you can just say, yeah, we're going to just walk in here and blast them. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't really like that. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, when you – so, I mean, when you – yeah, well, I mean, when you look when you look back at those CUSA games, I mean, I love that 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 Southern Miss rivalry to me is it's got a special place in my heart. I loved watching Memphis play them in basketball, Memphis play them in football. Uh, the fan base, Maybe. I mean that that little that little gym, that little gym in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, like those fans are right <laughs> on top of you. I right. mean, it's little as crap. It's small. Right. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the tad pad that used to be down in Ole Miss. Mm. Everybody raved about how great that cow pen was. That place was terrible. But um, <laughs> you know, Omar, when you, I mean, I think I think you definitely enjoy getting a chance to uh, reminisce a little bit today about your old Memphis days. Uh, we would love to have you back on the Four Star Sports Show anytime you are uh, in, uh, available uh, to talk. Man, we really enjoyed it today. Uh, thank you to everybody watching, listening. Uh, also, if you guys want to follow us, we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify as well. Uh, we got the website for number four, starsportshow.live. Uh, once again, Jonathan Sturdivant, but Omar Sneed, man, you've done an amazing job. Great interview today. Thank you very much, sir, for being on with us. Hey, Omar, real quick. Omar, real quick. I do want to say if you need a, a girls basketball game since you're an assistant coach for girls basketball, Wes has the hookup in Cross at Arkansas. And I know the hookup in Memphis. So if you ever want to come this way, you know, okay. and play some games or whatever, just send us a message and say, hey, you're looking for a game to get out of town with, you know, and so on. We'll definitely help you out regarding some games, yeah, hopefully, in the near future as well. I, I will do that. Definitely appreciate it, man. And uh, once again, thank y'all for having me on. This is my baby. This is my baby girl right there. So oh. thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Shout out. <laughs> Thank you guys for having us on. <laughs> I look forward to talking to you guys soon. And Omar, go All right, Tigers, Thank man. you, Omar. We appreciate it. Everybody, for the... go Tigers. Y'all right. take it easy, man. <laughs>